Yellowstone Supervolcano, Snake River Plateau, and progression of the geomorphology of this system. This is on the latest Caldera Chronicles of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, USGS. This uh, chronicle is written by Lisa Morgan and Pat Shanks, Emeritus Research Geologist with USGS, Kathy Whitlock, Regents Professor at the Department of Earth Sciences, Montana State University, and Steve Coleman, Director Professor Emeritus of Large Lakes Observatory, University of Minnesota, and adjunct scientist at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute, Joe Licciardi, Department of Chair Professor of Earth Sciences, University of New Hampshire. Have you ever tried to keep track of all the pieces while playing three-dimensional chess? Image of the, uh, the imagined fourth dimension, that which, which has time involved as well. The goal was to understand the evolution of the entire greater Yellowstone geo ecosystem. And that's an apt analogy for the 55 year research career of USGS scientist Emeritus Ken Pierce. Ken was hired by the USGS in uh, 1963 after earning his degree from Stanford, a BA in 1959, and a Yale PhD in 1963. Unraveling Yellowstone's geologic complexities has been Ken's passion since he began working there in 1965 and continues to be so. Meticulous observations and careful fieldwork have supported his overreach approach to geology, trying to understand what, why, how, and when. And Ken's first assignment was to map the poorly understood deposits left by glaciers in Yellowstone. So in that assignment, he helped to uh, produce the first numerical ages of glacial moraines in the western U.S. That landmark study showed the last two major glaciations in Yellowstone, the Bull Lake and Pinedale, were about 140,000 and 20, 22,000 years ago, respectively, coinciding with the Illinian and Wisconsin glaciations in North America. Ken recognized that the Bull Lake glaciation was more extensive to the south and west than the Pinedale and the Yellowstone region. He discovered the earliest Pinedale glaciers initially flowed southward from the Absaroka Beertooth uplift into the Yellowstone caldera, depositing thick glacial moraines. His mapping demonstrated early Pinedale glacial buildup occurring in the Yellowstone Plateau, YP for short, and ice flow later reversed from south to north over the crest of the Washburn Range into northern Yellowstone and beyond. Further mapping showed in the interval between Bull Lake and Pinedale glaciations, a center of Yellowstone's ice mass shifted towards high terrain to the northeast, a region can refer to as Yellowstone Crescent of High Terrain, YCHT. Glaciation in Yellowstone was dramatically different from elsewhere in the Rocky Mountains. So why is that? Ken deduce that the Snake River Plain, or SRP, acted as a low-lying conduit, channeling storms from the Pacific Northwest to the YP and YCHT, the crescent of high terrain, stimulating, stimulating the tremendous increase in rain, precipitation, and snow combined with high heat flow and high rates of seismicity. This explains why Yellowstone has more geothermal features than anywhere else in the world. It has 60% of the world's uh, geysers. Ken's questions of why areas covered by Bull Lake glaciation differed from those of Pinedale glaciation and why Yellowstone is topographically so much higher than its surroundings led to his pioneering work on the Yellowstone hotspot. Ken combined recent work on the progression of ages of volcanism becoming younger after southwest Idaho along the SRP, Snake River Plateau, northeastward to Yellowstone. This is where we have the area of uh, Idaho, where we're having the uh, Idaho quakes now, even up to today, after the 31st of uh, March to the night of April 1st of 6.5 out of nowhere. That's the Snake River Plain, Craters of the Moon area. So, um, the ages of volcanism becoming younger from southwest Idaho along the SRP, northeastward to Yellowstone, with his meticulous mapping of faulting and topographic uplift, 
Likewise, becoming younger to the northeast, this was the basis for understanding Yellowstone's origin as a hotspot. Ken's focus on the track of the hotspot and on changes in the Yellowstone landscape led to his work on heavy breathing of Yellowstone caldera. He calls it heaving. It goes up and down and up and down. It moves. It deforms. And recurring episodes of uplift and subsidence. Sediment cores and stratigraphic sections along the Yellowstone River reveal gravels deposited about 2,850 years ago and evidence of higher erosion power. Ken and his co-workers deduced that the river was then flowing much more vigorously than it is today, which they attributed to a period of profound uplift of its source area in Yellowstone caldera. Further study reveals changes in shoreline levels north of Yellowstone Lake related to uplift and subsidence of the caldera over the past 14,000 years. Through these discoveries, Ken brought understanding of Yellowstone's glaciation full circle. It turns out that subsidence and uplift at the YPSRP are essential to understanding complex facets of Yellowstone's recent glaciations, as is Yellowstone's hotspot origin. Deformation of Yellowstone caldera, the deformation, as we know, is changes to the surface of the volcano that occur due to magma movement underneath the surface. Most volcano deformation can only be detected and measured with precise surveying techniques, such as with a global positioning system, GPS, tilt meters, interferometric synthetic aperture radar, INSAR for short, or an electric distance meter, EDM. So, deformation of Yellowstone caldera evident in the distribution of the Bull Lake glaciation, where the topography was actively subsiding in the trailing western part of the hotspot, while the distribution of the younger Pinedale glacial deposit was affected by active uplift on the eastern alleging leading edge. For over 50 years, Ken Pierce has been a leading and humble contributor to what we know about Yellowstone and more fundamentally about geologic processes that inform the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory's ability to assess and respond to modern day activity. His findings on the state-of-the-art geologic field mapping, geomorphology, geochronology, and solid earth physics are guideposts for current research. His popular books, Interpreting the Landscape of Grand Teton and Yellowstone National Parks, Recent and Ongoing Geology, Good and Price, 1969 and 2010 editions, and Creation of the Teton Landscape, a Geological chron Chronicle of Jackson Hole and the Teton Range, by Love Reed and Pierce, 2003, have introduced the public to the geologic wonders of geo, uh, the Greater Yellowstone Geo Ecosystem. And in addition, Ken is an unselfish researcher who has shared his knowledge and mentoring many young geoscientists. His emblematic, he's emblematic of what it means to be a true public servant and a scientist working with eyes wide open. This is on uh, the latest Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.